Uh, I just want a, a little bit of an introduction. We'll run, probably I'll run through till a few minutes past 11 on, on this, but just to introduce what this is about. Uh, I've called this Revival Leadership School. You can play around with the word revival. Um, I will at some stage, I'm sure, talk about revival, reformation and renaissance. Um, but if you can wrap it all up in revival, that's what we all are living for, I believe. Uh, another way of putting that would be heaven on earth. So I've called it a revival leadership school, your leaders. It was about uh, 12 months ago, I was reading Steve Jobs' book and I, and I loved the way that he just divided Apple up into desktop and, uh, and laptop and professional and amateur. And it's like, that's the way he worked out his products. And I'm trying to do that with my life. So I, I, wanna, I wanna teach church and church leaders and I wanna teach individuals out there who are leading in the world out there. So I'm trying to narrow down my life. So I'm gonna take you on a journey, uh, called it Leading from Identity, this first school. The second school's leading an empowered organization. The third school uh, is leading uh, with Heaven's Vision and the fourth school this year is leading for Increase. And uh, this first school, the journey is, we start off talking a little bit about an apostolic family. Uh, I'll bring a little bit of definition to that. It's really my language for what I believe the church should look like. It should be an apostolic family. I'm gonna unpack a little bit of that, do a little bit of change the way you think, probably on the word apostolic, because some of you might already be thinking, I'm not an apostle. Well, we'll take care of that in a moment. Um, and uh, we'll run through what time is it, uh, which I, is, a, is a message that I'm very passionate about, uh, but also very excited about, because I do believe that we were born uh, uniquely for this moment in history, and it is an incredible moment in history. And then we'll look at our converging world. I'll unpack that a little bit. By then, you're beginning to get used to me drawing quadrants nearly all the time and, uh, and riding around quadrants. But Jesus died on a cross, which creates a quadrant if you draw it on a piece of paper. So it worked for him. I'm not planning on dying, but I do use the model. And I can prove that the Apostle Paul taught in fours. I, it's all over the place, so trust me, it's there. We'll have a look at culture, the power of, uh, sorry, we'll have a look at the changing church, and then a session on sonship. Many of you uh, will, I know, already have walked that journey. Uh, but there are always developments for us in our lives of pressing in more to the journey of sonship. So a look at that, which for me is essential. You cannot have an apostolic move of God without a journey of sonship and inner healing. If you have one without the other, they won't work out. It's as simple as that. We'll look at culture and the power of culture. Uh, many of these thing, themes are, are themes that you'll be familiar with. I think what I do is I contextualize them. I put them in a context and it helps people to go, ah, oh, that's why that's important in this season. And culture's probably one of the big ones. Then have a look at the gift of government. Don't freak out about that too much. I'm not gonna train you to become MEPs, although maybe, maybe we could do with some help from, uh, for, from believers. But uh, what is the gift of government? And I unpack it in a slightly different way. Uh, all of these sessions are probably around about 30 minutes, so they're short and sharp. Uh, they open doors if you want to go deeper and further into them. Then tonight, we're going to have a look at stewarding the presence. I think one of the great privileges of our lives is to steward the presence of God. And in each of the four schools, I have one session, which is really to provoke you uh, to think about how you lead meetings. So tonight, it will be stewarding the presence. Uh, the second school, it is leading meetings for healing and uh, prophetic. The third school is leading meetings for souls and salvation. And the fourth school is leading meetings that gather around communion uh, and, and, you know, the bread and wine, which I, I love to teach there. We'll have a brief look at introducing strategic planning. Uh, I have a different model. Uh, than most strategic uh, planning, certainly that's out there in the corporate world. Uh, I approach it from a different perspective, which I believe is, is kingdom. Uh, we'll have a look at the culture of family specifically. We'll just break that down a little bit and then have a look at this uh, transition, which I'll have talked about um, prior to this as well, which is moving from pastoral first to apostolic first. And... Uh, Again, you don't need to worry about that. I'm going to help you to change the way you think on some of these things. Uh, and then some shifts in the way we express our beliefs and therefore behave differently. 
and then characteristics of an apostolic culture and then we'll send you home with some homework to do in the next three months which is really saying some things, pursuing some things, doing some things and seeing some fruit. So that's a, a quick road map of these couple of days and uh, just a, I put my, uh, my story in there, uh, my brand, kind of weird thing to put in in a way. I don't put it in so that you go, oh Paul, your life story is amazing. I put it in for one reason. I passionately believe we need to believe our stories. And that what happens to a lot of us is we get into meetings, we'll go to a, you know, a Randy Clark, a Bill Johnson, whoever you want to put on the stage, we'll listen to their story and we'll go, gosh, your story's amazing. And we believe their story, but especially us Brits, I would say, um, and maybe generally across the continent of Europe, we're, we're a little reticent in believing our stories. And we need to believe our stories. We need to believe the way that God has led us and guided us and marked us. And, you know, people will come up to me and go, somebody did today, well, you know, I don't know anyone else who's got this unique combination of, you know, working in Bethel and running a prison. Well, no, there isn't. But, but every one of us has got our unique journey, our unique story, and what we bring to the table. So for me, the reason I put it in there is just to make you think, have I forgotten some parts of my, of my life story that I can bring out? One of, one of my favorites, which is in there, is about... Probably a year before I left Bethel, I was standing in worship. I was about to close worship. Bill had asked me to, uh, the, he said, make sure you point people to the Freedom Banner, which is where people get saved on a, uh, you know, on a Sunday morning, because there's a group of ex-prisoners coming to church. And I, I thought, not that I'm naturally that rebellious, but I thought, I'm not pointing to the Freedom Banner. I'm, we'll have an altar call. I, whenever I get the mic, we'll just go for it. And so I was in worship and I was just, like, what do you want me to say? And the Lord started a conversation with me. And the conversation was, what was your first career, Paul? You know that, God, which when God asks you questions, it's not because he doesn't know the answer. You know that. He, he asked, what's your first career? My first career was a nurse. What's your favorite day in your first career? What well, was the day that I walked into Terry Thompson's wife and said, your husband isn't dead, but he's alive. And uh, I got to work with Terry Thompson when I left nursing, joined the prison service, and I worked for him. He actually ended up working for me as well, which is funny. And, uh, and then God said to me, what was your second career? Well, I ran prison, God. What was your favourite day running a prison? Well, it was the day that I walked into Christopher Andrews' cell, and I'd got him the royal prerogative of mercy because he was dying of AIDS, and I got him released for his son's sixth birthday party. And uh, that was my favourite day. And as a result of that, I developed what I will forever use as my altar call. My call to salvation is based on this. You don't have to be dead, but alive. You don't have to be in prison, but be free. I had missed that in my story, but I pulled it out on that day. And many of you have pieces because when you believe your story, it's where your authority comes from. There is an authority in your story. And we... Honestly, I think one of our challenges as Brits is we put ourselves down, we, we believe other people's stories and we go, oh, that's amazing. Well, I believe it's time that we believed our story and we stepped into our authority. So that's in there. Um, one of the greatest challenges of my life is keep it simple. Uh, I will try and keep it simple. I do teach a lot of content. I've tried to dial it down for this school. I'm trying to get it simple. I, I increasingly, and I'll, I'll unpack a little bit of it in a minute, I, I believe that this, the more focus we can have at the centre of our organisations, uh, the greater level of excellence we will see in our organisations. So I'm really trying to keep it simple. Uh, change, uh, this school is really about leading change. I could have called it that. It's about leading change. It's about leading personal change, uh, change in, in your church, change in your people, change in your city. Uh, it's about change. Well, change begins in the mind. And we should be the experts because we have the mind of Christ. So as, as we start going through some of these things, just be aware that, that change really is our job description as Christians on the planet. You joined the Christian faith because your life got changed. And the rest of your life is to bring about change, to lead people to have their lives changed, to change societies, communities, change the way we do life. So we, we really are ahead of the game. We're going to come back to this in a minute, but I'm going to say it a lot of times. You are apostolic. 
And even if you don't believe me right now, you will eventually. You, you are apostolic and you were born for such a time as this. So uh, that's by way of introduction. And then um, you will also have some, some notes and I'm kind of going more into where the notes are now. Um, one of the things that I've become very aware of is that uh, there are many dynamics in a kingdom organisation. I'm not only aware of it, but I'm beginning to see that I've been unusually positioned to be aware of them and to kind of be able to step from one to the other. I noticed that there are, there are some churches which are, you know, they're, they're wonderful, they're spirit-filled, they're supernatural, they're touching revival, but they're missing out on some of the other pieces, the administration, the leadership development. They're, they're missing out in those areas. And, and I increasingly believe that we need to learn how to steward all of the dynamics. And I, I will probably um, touch on this in nearly every school in some way or another. But I've put around the outside here, and you have a list of them in your notes, these 12 dynamics, the supernatural, the organizational, the information, the leadership, the relational, and so on. And what I increasingly believe is, and what I will be trying to teach these these well, eight days this year, uh, are elements of these dynamics. You see, it, it can't be all spiritual. It can't be all supernatural. It can't be all prophetic. And, and one of the things I've noticed is that the clearer this center is, the clearer the spirit of the organization is, the easier it is to target all of these dynamics at the spirit of the organization. So you'll notice this coming up all the way through what I teach. You'll, you'll notice that I'll, I'll be talking about you know, strategy. And for some people like, well, strategy, strategic planning, I'm led by the spirit. Well, yeah, if you're led by the spirit, you're actually led by the great architect who was the greatest planner there ever was. So if you're really led by the spirit, you're actually going to be, you should be comfortable with planning. So uh, each of these elements, I come across people in, in church leadership who say, uh, oh, I, I don't do any management. It's like, well, oh, that's a shame. You, if, if you're going to grow, you'll need to learn to manage. The reality is if I start leading a small team and my team grows, I need to learn more management skills. Equally, if I start managing a small team and the small team grows, I, I'm going to need to learn some leadership skills. You, th there isn't an option in these areas. Uh, and so for each of, each of these, are, I believe our key dynamics happen to be 12, which is uh, a nice number. But, but learning how to steward all of these dynamics. And you, know, you take something like professional. Um, you, know, you might not have too many sort of classic professionals in your, uh, in your ministry, but you will at times need to bring them in. You'll need to bring in the, the consultant or the accountant or, or the lawyer um, to help you with something. And, and it's really helpful if you can steer them towards serving the spirit of the organisation. Now... I have a, it's difficult for me not to jump into a preach on that because I've just developed a particular a, a preach about the spirit of the organisation. But suffice it to say, I believe this is one of the keys. And, and what happens is, if we get too locked in one of these, we kind of, um, you know, alter the shape of the organisation. Uh, one of the classics here is as well what the sociologists call the routinization of revival. We, we all want revival, but what we've seen in history is we have revival, but then we've routinized the passion and the power out of the revival. Uh, we over-administrate it. I, I don't know how, I, I don't ever wish to be critical of a denomination, but I do think it's interesting that you have the Wesleyan revival that ends up being called the Methodist Church. Now, I'm not, I'm not dismissing the the beauty of it, but it is an example of did they move so far away from the revival and move into method that we see the routinization of revival. Now about you, but if, if, if I'm going to see a revival in my lifetime, which I believe I am in this continent, I don't want it to end. I, I don't want it to, to be over administered, but I know that it will need to be administered. I, I know that you need the both. So, so this for me is, is really a lot of, uh, of what's behind this school. 
Uh, that's why you'll see the gift of government. That's why you'll see some organisational strategy. You'll see some strategic planning. But you'll also see the supernatural. You'll see the spiritual. You'll see sonship in there. So this, this is just a very simple introduction to what is behind a, a lot of what I teach. And there in the middle, the spirit of the organisation. The spirit is, is not the mission. It's not the vision. It's something more kind of condensed than that. Uh, I, I kind of joke about it and say, if you take wine and you distill it, you get spirit. It's really that. It's like, what, what does it look like if you condense everything down to, like when you make a balsamic reduction, if you cook, you put balsamic vinegar, you cook it for a little while, it goes thick. What does your organisation look like? What, what, what do people experience? How does it make people feel? Uh, take some of the language. Are there recurring themes in your language? And obviously, I'm, I've spent 15 years in Bethel. Bethel is basically the presence of Jesus in heaven on earth. That's pretty much the spirit. And everybody's serving that. The janitor's serving that. That people who clean toilets. We don't use that word very much in England, do we, janitor? But everybody's serving that. It doesn't matter who they are. The, the accountancy team are serving that. The, the prophetic team are serving that. The school of ministry is serving that. Everybody is, is in some way or another serving that spirit. And what it does is it helps to bring focus to all these elements. So you don't get an information team who are off building their own thing. They're serving something bigger than them. So this is, I don't want to complicate too much and get too much in your head before I jump in. But I wanted just to introduce this because I do believe that it is behind everything that I teach uh, and it's, it's why uh, we see, uh, I believe, some places that experience a great revival or a move of God, but it's not sustained. And it's the failure to really embrace all of these dynamics of the organisation. <laughs>